A young man transfers to a school in the middle of nowhere after his father died. But he doesn't know that aside from bullies, he will have to take on spawns of hell to live through the semester. Can he manage to go through this? Let's find out in the movie. At the very beginning, a young man named Donald is watching an advertisement for Slaughterhouse School. After his father's passing, Donald's mom, Babs, needs to transfer him to another school. And she chooses the slaughterhouse because this is what her husband wanted, plus it is free. Just hearing the name of the school gives Donald a bad impression of the place. But his mother assures him that it is a great place. The scene then changes to Donald arriving at the slaughterhouse school. Mr. Houseman, a faculty member, takes Donald and his mom to his room. There, they meet his roommate, Blake. Houseman enthusiastically gives Donald a short orientation about the place. Babs, at the same time, sees a nameplate on the door belonging to a student named Viscount Seymour. Hearing this name, Houseman's mood suddenly changes. According to Houseman, Blake's previous roommate, Viscount, is no longer at the school. He then quietly scolds Blake for not clearing Viscount's stuff out of the room. After that, Houseman excuses himself to Donald and Babs. Curious, Donald asks Blake why his old roommate left. Blake is not allowed to answer it, but he assures Donald that he will get his answer soon. Just then, Babs also bid her goodbye to her son. The afternoon comes and all of the students of Slaughterhouse go to the hall. There, Donald notices a very beautiful student named Clemsy. Without her noticing, Donald snatches a drawing from Clemsy's things and gives it back to her, saying that she dropped it. He tries to flirt with her but fails. Worse, he is now standing in the wrong house. Clemsy tells Donald that everyone should be in their respective houses. She explains the different houses in Slaughterhouse to him. First, Andromeda is the all-girls house and where Donald is currently standing. Next is Xenophon, the house of scholars. Then there is the Olympus, where all the school jocks and athletes reside. Lastly, Sparta, the house of normal students where Donald belongs. Looking at the house of Sparta, Donald sees Blake waving at him. On his way there, Donald is stopped by a student named Matthew. He warns Donald not to talk to Clemsy because they are part of the Upper Sixth. Upper Sixth is some sort of group of elite students. While all of this is happening, Casper, the student leader, announces that the students are not allowed to bathe in the lake and go to the woods until further notice. Shortly after, the Slaughterhouse School's headmaster, called the Bat, arrives at the hall. He gives a warm welcome to the students at the school. Then, all of a sudden, some protesters barge into the hall, accusing the bat of allowing fracking within the school grounds. They start handing out pamphlets about fracking. These protesters are stopped by Matthew and the other Upper Sixth members. Meanwhile, Houseman is jogging in the woods while listening to a voicemail from his girlfriend, Audrey. Shortly after, he sees the fracking site. Although he knows about the operation, he doesn't expect it to be as big as what he is witnessing right now. As he heads back to school, the ground begins to crack. Going back into the hall, the bat explains to the students that fracking is the future of energy sourcing. Therefore, he allows TerraFracker, the company conducting the fracking, to operate on their school grounds. At this time, Matthew gets back inside the hall with blood on his hands. Seeing this, Blake clenches in anger. After a while, a necktie tied in a noose appears hanging on a restroom. At the other side, the fracking team discovers a tunneling system under the school grounds. Because of this, they assume this is what caused the occurrence of a sinkhole. Upon further analysis, they discover that the hole is full of gas. Thinking that they finally hit the jackpot, they begin to pump all of the gas. Shortly after, they monitor the presence of something moving underground. But the boss of the team dismisses it, saying that it's probably just moles. Meanwhile, in school, Donald and the others are talking about fracking. He is also reading the pamphlets given by the protesters. Suddenly, they hear Houseman calling for an immediate house meeting. Holding the necktie from the restroom earlier, he asks whose idea it is to do such a thing. But no one is owning it up, and Houseman is very disappointed with them. When he leaves, Donald asks Blake what the fuss is about. At this time, Blake reveals to him that Viscount actually didn't leave school, but committed suicide instead. He hung himself using a school necktie. The next day, Donald attends his Latin class with Houseman as the substitute teacher. When he looks outside, he sees Clemsy. 
He tries to wave at her, but he is also seen by her friends. After class, Donald gets picked on by Clemsy's guy friend for what he tried to do earlier. Later, Blake explains why there is no way Donald will be with Clemsy. Due to the school's ridiculous upper sixth system, Clemsy is like a queen that Donald is trying to reach. But Donald doesn't care about it because he is in love with her. Then all of a sudden, Matthew arrives and asks what they are talking about. When Donald is about to dismiss him, the nurse named Matron shows up, telling Matthew that Donald is in love with Clemsy. Hearing this, Matthew gets angry and gives Donald and the others sanctions. The next day, Donald and the others start serving their punishment, but Blake is having a hard time keeping up. As they reach the end of their track, Matthew orders Donald to attend to Blake. After helping his roommate to get out of the water, Donald lies in tiredness with him. At this time, they start to smell the foul odor coming from the lake. With only 20 minutes before breakfast ends, Blake leads the way to a shortcut in the woods. There, the two see the massive fracking site where it lies in a sinkhole. Hearing that the frackers are coming, they immediately hide. Unexpectedly, they don't know that there are security cameras around and they are already seen by the frackers. Suddenly, the sinkhole secretes a foul odor just like what they smelled in the lake. Blake starts smoking and the flame from his lighter turns green. Seeing this, Donald snatches the lighter from him, thinking it might cause an explosion. Blake tries to get it back because it was given to him by a special person, but fails. Suddenly, the boss and one of the frackers decide to make fun of them. When they sound the alarm, they pretend that they are coming for Donald and Blake. So the two students quickly away from the fracking site and stumble upon the camp of anti-fracking protesters. There, they see the one of the protesters that barged into the school last time wearing a neck and shoulder brace. The leader of the protesters then approaches them and asks if they want drugs. When they say they were just running away from the frackers, the leader realizes that they are from Slaughterhouse. He then shows the old school tie on his left wrist, signifying that he was once a student there. He proceeds to tell them that what Terra Fracker and the Bat are doing will unleash hell upon the school. Later that night, Donald cannot sleep, so he decides to go outside and research the anti-fracking campaign. That is when he discovers that the Slaughterhouse School once fought to stop fracking. The fight was led by a student named Woodrow, the same leader of the protesters from earlier. Unfortunately, Woodrow's younger brother, who also attended Slaughterhouse, went missing in the school's tunnel system and was never found again. When Donald is about to get back in his room, Matthew suddenly shows up doing rounds in the corridor. Donald tries to go the other way to avoid him, but is still heard by Matthew, who starts looking for him. Just then, Donald trips down a basement where he discovers a plaque with the name Teddy Chapman on it. Upstairs, Blake puts a necktie tied in a noose outside Matthew's door, revealing that he is the one putting up the ties around the school. The next day, Donald is crying while talking to his mom over the payphone. He says he wants to go home and hopes his mom can come pick him up. While doing so, some people are constantly knocking on the phone booth. Pissed, Donald is about to confront them until he sees that it is Clemsy and a friend of hers named Kay. Right then, Donald's mood changes and tells his mom that he is alright. He also lies to Clemsy, saying that his mom always misses him so he called her. At this time, Clemsy and Kay invite Donald to join them at the smoking corner. There, Donald and Clemsy have the chance to talk alone as Kay decides to be on the lookout. The two talk about how strict their school system is, even causing one student to take away his life. Clemsy reveals to Donald that Viscount was badly bullied for being gay. It also made it worse that he got on the wrong side of Matthew, just like Donald. As it turns out, Blake happens to be in the basement and overhears them. Shortly after, he shows up and interrupts Donald's flirting game. Blake also takes the opportunity to get back his lighter from Donald. Just then, Kay warns them that Matthew and his cadets are coming. The two try to run, but Matthew and the cadets still see them, accusing the two of smoking. The chase ends when the cadets corner Donald and Blake at the lake. Matthew throws a small dynamite at them, but Donald quickly kicks it into the lake. However, to their surprise, the small dynamite causes a massive explosion and a lake of fire. As it turns out, there has been a methane leak at the lake because of the fracking operation in the woods. Afterward, Donald and Blake are brought to the headmaster's office. Also, Houseman, Matthew, and two other witnesses to the smoking incident are present. There, the bat calls the fracking team, but they are purposely not answering the call. Yet, he pretends that he is talking to the frackers, even if no one is answering from the other line. 
Then, he tells Hausman and the students that it is just a case of a minor methane leak. Hearing this, Hausman begs to differ, especially after he witnessed the lake on fire. However, the headmaster just ignores him and changes the topic to Donald and Blake's case of smoking. Because of this, the two are punished to perform sanctions with Matthew this coming weekend. After getting out of the office, Donald and Blake bump into Kay, who teases them for not being able to go home. But she lightens up Donald's mood by saying that Clemsy is staying for the weekend too. Yet Blake quickly shatters his happiness by pointing out that he is nothing compared to Clemsy. Hurt by what Blake said, Donald bursts out and says Blake is not a good roommate. He even says that maybe Viscount was dead because Blake was not there for him when he needed him the most. After that, Donald leaves Blake and tries to look for Clemsy, but he sees Clemsy as being sweet and clingy to a guy named Smudger, which breaks his heart. Meanwhile, at House of Sparta, after hanging a necktie for the last time, Blake is now ready to take himself out. When Donald sees the hanging necktie, he realizes something and immediately goes to their room. Just in time, he manages to stop Blake's plan of suicide. Then, Donald apologizes for everything he said to Blake. Later that night, while Hausman is drowning himself with alcohol, an earthquake shatters the school and cuts off its power line. Because of the shake and alcohol, Hausman passes out. After the quake, Matthew does a headcount of the people staying in Sparta. They have him, Donald, Blake, two more students named Hargreaves, and Wooten, Matron, and the passed out Hausman in his room. Matthew orders the students to stay indoors until further notice, while Matron is assigned to accompany the bat in his office. Meanwhile, at the sinkhole, the fracking team gets attacked by creatures that emerge out of the sinkhole. The boss immediately requests a chopper for evacuation. On the other side of the woods, Woodrow, who is high now, hears the commotion outside of his tent. Realizing what is happening, he goes out to search for his younger brother. Going back to school, Donald sees a chopper crash near the fracking site. At this time, he and Blake decide to investigate what is happening. However, they don't know that Matthew is listening to them from outside their room. But when he barges in, the two are already gone. However, he finds many neckties in the room and realizes that Blake is the one hanging them around the school. On their way out of the school, Donald and Blake come across Clemsy and Kay, who also want to investigate. Together, they go to the woods and arrive at the fracking site. There, they hear something growling, but Blake thinks it is just a fox. Later on, they discover a baby mole-like creature. As Clemsy takes a closer look, the creature attacks her and goes inside her uniform. She immediately takes off her uniform, wraps the creature, and then bashes it to death. Hearing more growling in the distance, the group decides to leave the woods. While all of this is happening, Matthew is all geared up like a military man. He then asks Hargraves and Wooten where Donald and Blake are, but he gets no answer. Meanwhile, after getting out of the woods, the four go straight to the headmaster's office to report what just happened. The students suggest they should report the incident to the police immediately, but the bat declines. Clemsy gets very angry and orders the headmaster to drive them to the nearest police station. Just then, a huge dog-like creature breaks into the room and kills the nurse. Seeing this, the headmaster and students quickly leave the office. Luckily, the creature snobs the headmaster's dog because it is not interested in it. They all get into the car, but they hit something when they go in reverse. Just then, the bat remembers the dog and thinks he hit him. The headmaster quickly gets out of the car and checks the back of the car. But to the student's horror, the bat's body suddenly lands on the hood of the car, followed by his head. Seeing the creature in front of them, Donald and Clemsy immediately drive the car together. Donald hits the pedal on the passenger seat while Clemsy steers the car from the back seat. Then, they ram the creature into the nearest building, killing it. Afterwards, they are about to leave the school, Clemsy suddenly remembers Smudger. As it turns out, Smudger is Clemsy's brother. Hearing this, Donald gets happy and agrees to go back to rescue Clemsy's brother. They immediately go back to Sparta and meet with Hargreaves and Wooden. Arming themselves up, they all prepare to go to the Upper Sixth Party where Smudger is currently being initiated as a new member. They arrive at the place and the people there have no idea that there are murdering creatures lurking around the school. After finding an opportunity, Donald goes to get Smudger, who is tied up. Unfortunately, he is spotted by other members and ties him up to get initiated as well. Seeing this, Blake, Clemsy, and Kay head out to save him and Smudger. To make matters worse, Matthew also gets to Donald. Just then, the creatures reach the place and start to add blood to the party. Lucky for Donald, Matthew gets attacked by a creature. Clemsy takes the opportunity to rescue Donald, 
and they help Smudger to walk. Meanwhile, Houseman suddenly shows up and scolds Hargraves and Wooten for leaving the dorm in the middle of the night. He still has no idea what is going on, but when he sees his students being chased by an unknown creature, he trips down in fear. Luckily, he has the spear he took from Wooten and stabs the creature as it tries to attack him. Seeing this, the students attack the monster, bathing Houseman with its blood and guts. Afterward, he and the students hide in the smoking area. There, he is trying to contact his girlfriend, but there's no signal. Seeing that Houseman is losing his composure, Donald knocks some sense into him, saying that they need him. Collecting himself up, Houseman begins planning for their next move. Just then, they decide to call the creatures frack because they came from the fracking site. Suddenly, they see a distress flare. That is when Houseman remembers the cadet range. The group immediately goes to the cadet range, but to their surprise, the wounded Matt is also hiding there. Seeing him alive, Houseman orders him to give one firearm to each of them. However, Matthew doesn't comply, revealing to Houseman that Blake is the one hanging neckties around the school. But Houseman doesn't care about this at the moment. However, Blake is angry and calls Matthew a prick, causing him to point his gun at Blake. Houseman orders him to put his gun down, but Matthew shoots Houseman's leg instead. At this time, Matthew tells his plan to the group. He wants to use Donald and Blake as bait for the creatures, and then they will break a run to the tunnel. All of a sudden, Houseman's phone rings. This distracts Matthew, and Donald takes the opportunity to subdue him. But Matthew still gets the upper hand in the fight. At this critical moment, Hargreaves shows up with a gun and shoots Matthew in the neck. When Matthew stumbles near the window, two fracks attack him. Houseman tries to save him, but he gets dragged out as well. With all of his remaining strength, Houseman orders the students to get into the tunnel and escape. Upon getting into the tunnel, they come across Woodrow who's looking for his brother. Donald and Blake ask his help to get them out of the tunnel, thinking that he knows the way out just as he did before. But Woodrow reveals that he and his brother were not trying to escape. Rather, they were trying to blow up the school because they knew about the gas beneath the school. When they are talking, a frack shows up. Woodrow, who's still high, tries to pet it but gets killed in the process. Seeing this, the students take the opportunity to escape, but they encounter another frack on their way to the path that will lead them outside. Wanting to save others, Blake takes on the frack head-on while he lets the others escape. However, Donald refuses to leave him alone. Clemsy kisses him and orders him not to die before he goes back for his roommate. When Donald returns, he blows Blake's snuff into the nose of the frack, causing it to back away. Unfortunately, the scent of the snuff attracts other fracks. The two immediately break for a run outside of the tunnel. But before he gets out, Donald asks for Blake's lighter. At this time, Blake reveals to him that it's Viscount's lighter. Using it, Donald blows up the tunnel, eventually spreading the explosion to the whole campus. After watching their school blow up, Blake ties a necktie around Donald's wrist. This signifies that Donald ends what Woodrow started. Meanwhile, on the other side of the campus, it is revealed that the headmaster's dog and houseman are still alive. The movie ends with the students walking away from the Slaughterhouse School. Slaughterhouse Rules is the kind of movie that you can watch when you just want to pass some time. Also, Asa Butterfield carries this movie so hard. His character has more depth than the actual protagonist. Maybe if the story revolves around his character, a better movie will be produced.